Welcome back to Sports Federation TV, the show where we talk about a range of different codes of sport brought to you by the Western Cape Provincial Sport Confederation. My name's Alton. We shift our attention slightly to Netball Bonki. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Courtly, you well? I'm good, thanks. Good. Netball is a up-and-coming sport. This weekend past was definitely not up and coming. <laughs> SA team did us proud. How do you fit into the netball structure? I was part of the Sting team this year. So yeah, that's how I fit in. We um, uh, Playing for the Stings is one of the steps that you definitely need to go through to come out to the national side. So what is the Stings team? Because I, I have no idea what the Stings team is. The Stings team is, uh, there's a new competition, it was uh, previously called Brutal Fruit and it's now called the Telcom Netball League. It is where the top 10 sides in South Africa from the various provinces like the Jaguars are from Gauteng, uh, the Stings are Cape, uh, from Western Cape, um, the, s the Kingdom Stars are from like Kuzunata and it's a five week competition and we take part in it. Yeah. What's it like playing amongst all those top players? It's really difficult uh, just getting into the team and being, it's such an honor just to be able to play for these things because you are playing with the best people in the, in the you're playing against the best people in the country, you're competing to play in the team with the best people in your mm. province. It's, it's really tough work. Pongi, how do you fit into all of this? Um, I play for the Western province. Uh, previously known as Western Province, it's yeah. now called Cape Town Netball Federation. Yes. I'm in one of the senior teams there, um, so that's how I fit into Netball, but I also do umpiring and coaching. Okay, so how, how does the umpiring and coaching fit into all of your busy schedule if you're still playing? Um, playing is, since you know in South Africa we don't have professional leagues or anything, so playing doesn't take up much of my time. So full time, I'm a netball coach. That's what I do. And with coaching comes umpiring. So I'm able to juggle all my netball um, into my schedule. Yes. Full time. Yeah, that's all I'm doing at the moment. I'm coaching. Um, I've got one school. I'm doing the primary and the high school. Nice. So that's where I am. And in terms of your other responsibilities within netball as a as a player, what's it? Player commission. <sighs> yes, I, I I am quite involved with my netball because I am a province player. I'm an umpire. I'm a coach. I am an umpire convener. I'm also the chairperson of Cape Town Netball's Players Commission. So what does the Players Commission do? Or what's the role of the Players Commission? Um, with the Players Commission committee, I'm basically for the players, about the players, whatever issues that the players have that are under the umbrella of Cape Town Netball, if they feel that they can't solve it at sub-district level, then they can approach me and I will take that information forward to the Cape Town a um, Exco. And from there, we can just come up with um, a fair solution to the problem. So what's a sub-district? Sub-district is that we have one big umbrella that's called Cape Town Netball Federation. Under that umbrella, we have our, dis our different sub-districts. So we have our Tigerberg sub-district, we have our Cape um, Northern District, which is previously known as Belleville. Mm. We have Kailicha sub-districts, we have uh, Mitchell's Plain, Mitchell's Plain sub-districts. And then under those sub-districts are all the clubs that are affiliated. So it just makes it easier to group our clubs and then we all know eventually they all fall under Cape Town Netball Federation. Because all of them can't cl clearly play in one little area on a, w on a Saturday and that's mm, part that's of the reason. Mm, and um, the different sub-districts, some have their league games on Thursday nights. So it depends what works for the sub-districts and their teams and then they make that decision. Where do you play Courtly? Which sub-district do you play in or how does your, where do you fit into all of this? Um, I play club at UWC. So we play Saturday leagues. We play on a Saturday at UWC, the Belleville League. And, and how competitive is the Belleville League? It is competitive, but obviously because uh, we are university and our university, uh, like we ride in a club team. So mm. compared to the other club teams, we are a little bit stronger. Do you agree with that, Bongi? Um, I would have to agree because um, I also play in the same league as her and I've watched what she's saying. They're fortunate enough that they play together for Varsity Cup, for USA, for league. So in all these competitions, they're usually very strong because they're used to each other. Mm. Whereas other teams, you'll find that they practice maybe once a week and they play only on the Saturday league. That's the only time they get to play. So UWC is very fortunate that they get all this time together to build as a team. 
Yes. How has, how has netball changed over the last two years that you guys have been at the forefront of it? Has it changed in any way? I mean, we're we, we on the cusp of hosting, hosting the 2023 World Cup. Has things changed in any way? Um, from my side, the only change that I've noticed is from our national players, and that's a change that is positive. Mm. And I think it's positive because, firstly, Norma Plama, who's an international um, coach, was brought into our side to coach our girls. And we know she's won uh, two World Cups with Australia. Yeah. And then secondly, most of our pro-tier players are playing league overseas. Oh, is it? So they're playing in Australia, yeah. New Zealand, and in England. That's the top league that you can have um, in the world. So the experience that they've had over the past few years is what we saw this past weekend. Their performance was clinical, they were exceptional, and that's how we ended up coming forth. So the changes that I've seen in the past um, two years, I can say, are actually positive ones. We're hoping that what's happening in the other countries can be brought back here in South Africa. So, so, they, so they literally live in Australia and play league there? Yes, yes. Um, because even after this weekend, most of our SPA Pro Tier players didn't come back to OR Tambo. Yeah, they, they had to go back, back to Australia to finish off the league for the year. Like uh, Pumza and Carla, yeah. they play together at Sunshine Lightning. So it's like how they competing every week against the best. So when they go to the World Cup, it's just like you're playing against the girl that might be playing in your club. Mm. Sure. Do you have aspirations to do that, Courtly, to go play in, in, in Australia? I think speaking from like me, myself, my friends, that is... If once you've made it there, you know that you've made you can basically make it anywhere because that is the top league in the world. Courtly, one aspect is the is the in, is the professional element of, of netball, as as we've just discussed now with Pumza. But you're also at university. What happens to them? Do they have an academic background like yourself to be able to fall back on that? Because that's a big component for me as a sports person. You need to have an academic background post netball. Most people who play netball at after school, you, uh, you go into university setup. There are many that do study through UNISA or through um, online colleges and stuff, but they generally go to a club. So to, before Brutal Fruit, um, the stepping stone before getting into a national side or going higher with your netball was being able to play Varsity Cup yep. and being able to play USA. And many of, as I can, uh, many of the Spapoteers have um, studied and they have their degrees as well. So, um, for example, Carla, she is a dietitian, qualified dietitian, and I saw the other day she got a master's in yeah. di dietitian. So, in a way, the sport forced us or yeah. it makes you want to go and study to want to play varsity yep. club and USA and all those other competitions as well which is great and, and that's how it should be there should be a back a back yes. marker to be able to say if i don't make it big or if then i finish my yeah. netball at 30 yeah. i can still go <laughs> and <laughs> i can still go and have a career yes mm. so i think um as much as we still complaining that netball is not a professional sport it actually has a, a silver lining that it does force you to have a backup, um, which is in terms of education, because you know that professionally, you, you can't play netball full-time in South Africa and get paid for it. For sure. You must have another yeah. job, and then um, on the side, you can play your netball. Yes. Exactly. And, and then build it up to potentially put your, your career yeah, on hold if yes. you go into Australia. Mm. Hey, Courtly. <laughs> is that the goal, Courtly? Yes, it is. But when is that? When do you finish your studies? Oh, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> I study my, f I finish my studies in about two years, but if the opportunity comes along, uh, I, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll push my studies aside for now. Just, just, just a little, just a little, little. little just a little. Bit. Unisa will have to work for you then. Yes. <laughs> Ladies, in closing, Bongi, where do you see us going as as netball fraternity? We are going very far. We are going very far, and having been awarded um, the 2023 World Cup bid, that's quite exciting. For, th for the next four years, I see big things happening in the country in terms of netball. Uh, Mum Cecilia did mention that she's going to develop players from the most rural of areas to the most urban, small areas and work their way up. Nice. And since I'm from Cape Town Netball, we're also doing a fantastic job. Just last night, we were awarded the Federation of the Year. 
uh, by the Western Cape Town. Cape, Coast Coast. Yes, they were awarded there. So that's something that shows that Cape Town Netball is working. Mm. It wants to get their players where it should be. So in the next couple of years, I do see big things happening. Definitely. Courtly, yes. where do you see uh, yourself and Netball in the next three years, seeing that you've got three two years, years to study? <laughs> Um, no, um, netball is definitely going to grow in South Africa, in Cape Town, in Western Cape. Um, we, there are definitely plans being put in place mm. and it can only go higher from here. Definitely. Ladies, thank you very much for your time. Thank, thank you. All the best. Thank you. See you soon. <laughs> that brings the end to netball. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll finish the show with karate. See you now.